But see, Jay, we also got to get into this uh, 50 years of hip-hop conversation, 50 man. years of hip-hop. I mean, how do you feel having a 30-year-long career, and what do you feel like the Bay brought to hip-hop that is being represented or being misrepresented right now? I think, and I don't know how this happened, because I think every... I think every area of America where our people was at doing music, we all wanted to get on. Mm -hmm. For some reason in the Bay Area, they wasn't looking at us. Mm. They was looking at LA. Yeah. So LA had motion. In the Bay Area, we only had Too Short. Because mm. Too Short games start from 84. Yeah. 85, 86, by 87. By 88, Too Short had a platinum record. Mm. Me and a, a certified mm -hmm. million yeah. something record sold by 1988. Yeah. But there was no one else. Okay? Mm -hmm. So people like E40 um, and his uncle St. Charles, they engineered the independent route because let me go, let me, let me, let me show you what I mean. If I'm supposed to get six dollars from my distributor, mm -hmm. E40 Uncle came up with a plan to say, "Give me three dollars up front, and then you run your own blueprint." Mm -hmm. Now that's not really the smartest. Mm -hmm. It's not the smartest, according to why would you give the distributor a deal for three dollars? Why don't you just wait for your money? But E40 and St. Charles, his uncle was like, because that give you access to some of your capital right now to make some more albums, get some more posters, go do some promo, make another album, go get you some studio equipment, sign another art. Like you have access to your money because when you wholesale, that could be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, or whenever your pack sale. Mm -hmm. And he was like, this the new way, $3 per cassette tape, get the money right now. When he introduced me to that, Mm -hmm. And I came with 5,000 cassette tapes, but I got a check for 15,000. Mm. I was still happy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I did kind of feel some kind of way, <laughs> but I'm like, bro, I just drove my pack to this distributor and they gave me a check today. And then when they called and said they needed more, why? Because now they might sell it for $5 to the store and the store paying cash instead of, like, you, you get yeah. what I'm saying? Like, they did it. By doing that, it gave each person a chance to say, shit, let me get, so you mean I can get these for $5 right now? Mm -hmm. So a store might be quicker to buy them up front. Yeah. Ain't no, ain't no, I shipped them to you, wait for the money. Nah, yeah. the store, like, why do I want to, pay seven dollars mm -hmm. for a tape when I can pay five dollars for a tape so now the distributor just made an extra two real quick mm -hmm. and then when the store buy it for five cash and sell it for ten they happy per it don't matter how long it take these tapes I'm gonna get five dollars profit mm -hmm. so the Bay Area brought a new wave of how to get some money off your music as opposed to all this distribution deal publishing record label signing all that nah who made the pack mm -hmm. the bay area is who came up with make the pack and get that thing off that's what i think we brought to the table we started the movement of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. we had more record labels than than even la la didn't even catch on till later mm -hmm. you know i i gotta give it to to e42 short mac dre you mm -hmm. know what i mean like a young black brother who we signed to, Kyrie and them. Then I came, I was the youngest out of the whole crew. I was a baby. Mm -hmm. So I came, but I put out more albums and records and all of them put together because I was excited. My mama let me put a studio in my room. I got the whole neighborhood coming. She like, baby, long as you ain't selling dope and you ain't gang banging all that, man, I don't care. You bring whoever you need to. Long as you're in that room every day and every night, I, I feel better, mm -hmm. you know? But we don't get... I don't think we get the recognition for that, which is okay. Um, I don't think we get included in a national rap scene outside of E-40 and Too Short. Them yeah. the only two that I think that get the recognition. Um, so when you say 50 years of hip-hop, 1973, 
And imagine, I'm born 1973, November 8th. I'll mm. be 50. But my whole life, I've been in this since yeah. I, I did. I recorded my first six songs at the age of 14 at Pier 39. I was the first 14 year old in San Francisco or the Bay. At that time, they had a radio called a Panasonic radio mm -hmm. that you could walk with, dual cassette. Boombox. The boombox. Yeah. Now, the boom, now hold on. The boombox was the big one. That cost oh, 400 oh, okay, yeah. This one only cost 85 We can okay, break bands with that one on our show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, so a Panasonic, I was able to, if you want to copy these songs, you give me your blank tape and give me $2, $5, whatever, mm -hmm. and I could push high speed dub. Mm -hmm. And boom, now you got a copy. Mm -hmm. I was the first kid in the base selling cassette tapes. Mm. I don't that, I don't get no credit for that, but that's okay. Because in 88, when I did that, by 89, I was on my way to jail for breaking in cars or drive by, doing some just shit that I just as a kid I probably shouldn't have been doing. But by the time I came home, I, I never forgot. Mm -hmm. that spirit but I only learned that from too short when he like man I'm selling my tapes out the trunk mm -hmm. and he'll make a customized tape and put your name in it your name in it his name my name go record it when he come back you buying that tape for five or ten for sure why because your name in it 